Welcome to Above All Ministries, and these are your announcements. Join us every Sunday for our Sunday morning service at 9 o'clock a.m., streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and on the website at www.aboveallministriesla.com. And if you're looking for something a little bit more personal and intimate, you can join us every Monday at 7.30 a.m. for our Monday morning devotion and prayer live on Zoom. If you need the Zoom link, all you have to do is text at Pray Monday to 81010. That's right. The keyword at Pray Monday to 81010 for our Monday morning devotion and prayer at 7.30 a.m. And visit us online at www.aboveallministriesla.com, where you can go and see all our previous sermons, prayer requests, and much, much more. And while you're there, don't forget to click the button and download our church app. Hey family, Pastor Vernon Doug Jenkins here. And I just wanted to come here and thank each and every one of you guys for everything that you have done and for the support that you guys have been doing since the inception of this ministry, which kicked off on October 15th of last year. Since then, you guys have been watching, you guys have been supporting, whether it's through prayer, whether it's monetary, even for the Love Thy Neighbor tour, you guys came out in droves. I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart and from my family and the Above All Ministries family. We just wanna say thank you and we love each and every one of you. And of course, happy Resurrection Day. Follow us and subscribe to our social media pages. That's at the official Above All on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And if anyone is interested in opening up for worship for any of our live stream services, just email a worship video to info at aboveallministriesla.com. That's info at aboveallministriesla.com. Hey guys, I need y'all to mark y'all calendars. We have another event coming up May 13th. We have an event called A Taste of Love. It's a community picnic. It's going to be an awesome time. Hey, let me tell you, let me explain what a taste of love is. It's just a kickback, relaxed type of situation. It's going to be at Bridge Ministries of Acadiana, where we're going to have different organizations, different churches, different individuals, anyone who wants to come out and cook. We're going to be cooking for the community, where we're going to invite everyone for the community to come on out and you can just go from tent to tent from person to person and just tasting everybody's food. That's all it is. We're gonna have music, we're gonna have games, and we're gonna have food and fun. That's all we're gonna do. So remember, May 13th, come on out. That's gonna be at Bridge Ministries of Acadiana. And look, if you guys wanna participate and set up a tent or a table and come out and tailgate with us and cook, come on. We welcome everybody. Just give us a call or contact us or inboxes and you can be a part of A Taste of Love. See you then.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> I, I, my uncle in the building, I like, he talked about, he, he talked back to me. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Welcome to Above All Ministries. As you guys know, thank you guys for coming, but we are majority online, so we do have our online family watching as well. And first and foremost, I just want to tell you guys, happy Resurrection Day to you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, pretty much all you guys know who I am. I'm Pastor Vernon Doug Jenkins. Uh, for all you guys that's watching, and I am your pastor of, of Above All Ministries, guys, where we believe in putting love in its proper position, and that's above all things. So, guys, let's go ahead and open up with prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, as humble as we can, God, on your day, God. We just ask that, God, you, you would just come into this place, God, with your resurrection power. Father, we ask that you would just change us, God, and you just, just use us for your glory, God. And Father, we just ask that you would rain down in this place, God. We know the power that you had that raised you from the grave. We ask that that same power come into this place, God, that when we leave this place, God, that we would not be the same, whether it's us here in person or whether you're watching online. Father, I pray that your anointing power would fall fresh upon your people this morning, God. Father, we say thank you for the cross because we know that we was, like they say, lost as a goose. You know, uh, in a hailstorm, God, without you, Father. But now we are here, God. And Father, we know exactly who to look up to, God, and it's you and only you. So we are here today to celebrate a risen king. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you with every inch of our heart, God. And we say all these things in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Guys, um, here, at above all, here at Above All Ministries, you know, something that we always do, uh, most of you guys already know already. One thing that we do, we before we start anything, you know, before, you know, uh, worship, uh, tithing or anything. I know somebody said what we do, what we do. Y'all know. You don't count. <laughs> we always do a forgiveness decree and declaration. Let me explain why. For those who watch it for the first time. OK, I know y'all get some of y'all get tired of hearing me saying this. But I just believe that it's really, really, really important for us to do this because this forgiveness declaration and decree is something that we do that we pray that chains would be broken in our lives of that unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness, honestly, is something that is very, very difficult to break. Let's just be real. Some of us are holding unforgiveness in our hearts since we since we was this this high. We was this high. And now we fully grown and we still holding that unforgiveness in our heart. We are. So this day we want to we we want to decree and declare that we're going to forgive. We're going to forgive. And I understand that, you know, it don't happen right away. It doesn't happen right away. But my prayer and my heart's desire is that one day we, we continue to say this and then it just break. That unforgiveness that you're holding, it just breaks. Praise God. How you doing that, Mona? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My people that's walking in, you know, anyway, we're going to go ahead and recite this unforgiveness. Mm, smooches to you. Smooches. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for coming. So without without further ado. Oh, one last thing about the forgiveness decree and declaration. The other reason why we recite this decree is that too many times we we come to church and we come to worship. And we quick to say hallelujah and all these different things. We want to praise God, but we got all that junk in our hearts. Let's be real. The thing is, we have to pour our, our junk out so that God can fill us back up. You know, so let's not come to God unworthily. You know, we're not going to play, play church. That's one thing at Above All Ministry. I don't want you guys playing church. <laughs> you know, we want to have a pure heart before God, you know, come to him right. So without further ado, I want to recite this forgiveness decree and declaration to you guys. And it's stated, I decree, I declare that I am a child of God. Because of this, I understand that he imposed great responsibility upon me. One of those responsibilities is for me to forgive, to forgive those who have wronged me physically, emotionally, spiritually, or otherwise. I understand that forgiveness is a choice. I also understand, as said in Matthew 6, 15, this is scary, y'all, a man who refuses to forgive, refuses to be forgiven. Therefore, this day, I decree and declare to forgive those who have wronged me, whether they deserve it or not. 
I release myself from the prison of unforgiveness right now in Jesus name. I forgive parents, friends, spouses, pastors, co-workers, strangers. I even take a moment of silence for those I haven't named. I forgive them too. I pray for a pure heart that's ready to love people and worship God. I know forgiveness may not be easy. That's why I declare unto this day for God to enter into my heart and help me with this declaration. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive in Jesus name. Guys, that is our forgiveness declaration. To some, it's just words, but to some, it's, it's, it's a chain breaker. And that's my prayer that it'll just break something one day in somebody, whether you're in person or you're online, my prayer is that something just break and you just fall down and say, I forgive them. Cause I just want to say, remember this, whether you realize it or not, forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you because the people that we hold in this unforgiveness for, they are going on by their business, living a life. And we are here making ourselves sick, We're making ourselves sick, high blood pressure, angry, disgusted, our wives mad, our husbands mad, because that's all we talk about, right? Three words in the words of frozen, right? Let it go. <laughs> let it go. Just let it go. So. Guys, uh, I got a, I got a couple of songs. Normally I only play one song. You know, my wife still haven't came up here to sing yet. You know, I've been, been trying to get her to come in and worship. So because we don't have a praise team yet. You sure you're not ready today? OK. It's the Bible said make a joyful noise. <laughs> Keyword noise unto the Lord. Guys, I have a couple of songs. Normally, we only play one song. Of course, you don't see this big band up here. But I'm going to tell you this, like I say every time. Never despise small beginnings. Never. Don't do that. And then I look at it this way. It's not even small beginnings. Because we, we, don't, we don't meet every week in person. We have people watching from all over the place. And our goal is not that I be lifted up. It's that God be lifted up. And we are to go to the nations and preach his gospel, his love. This is why we hear. Now, I want, to, I want to put a charge on myself before we, even, before we even worship. You have permission from me. Listen close. You have permission from me, whether you're here or on person. If you see Doug going astray, and I am up here talking more about me than I am talking about God, you have my permission to put me in check. Straight up. That's the first thing. You have my permission to put me in check. God did not call me to stand behind a pulpit to talk about me. I'm just being real. He did not call me to talk about me. I could I, I could have did that by myself. What you funny for? Like, like, <laughs> like I'm good at it or something. But I'm just saying we are going to the nations. And Mona, where you live at? Missouri. We got Val right down Colfax. We got Chad all the way in South Africa, which we're about to play one of his songs for you guys online. But let me be quiet. We got, we got a couple of songs that you can go ahead and start it. Our online guest going to see up my brother, Chad Prince from South Africa, who opens up and worship for us. So let me get out your way. Good day and welcome to Above All Ministries. Be blessed. don't believe in fairy tales I guess I've outgrown them But that doesn't mean that I don't believe That there's something bigger than me Cause I've seen it in the hospital When the doctor said sorry There's nothing more we can do well, it wasn't true I've never seen a part of gold At the end of a rainbow But I got a promise I can hold In the middle of the struggle God 
God, if you said it, you perform it, may not be how I want you to. But here's what I'll do. I'm gonna wait on you. I'm gonna wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I'm trusting your promise. So I'm gonna wait on you, yeah. I'm gonna wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I'm trusting your promise. So I'm gonna wait on you, yeah. It's the least I can do is wait, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord, cause He will renew your strength, so wait.
He's already provided. Cause He's already provided. He's already provided. Yeah, yeah. Everything you need, He's already provided. Yes, he has and every promise you can claim. Just ask it in his name. Everything you need, he's already provided. So anyway, without further ado, guys, um, one thing here, one thing about giving at Above All Ministries, I just want to make it very, very, very clear, guys. Um, we do believe in giving from the heart. That's what we believe. We believe in giving from the heart. We don't beat you down with scripture and say that, hey, you have to give a tenth. No, the Bible said God loves a cheerful giver. And whatever you have to give, it is, it is grateful to him and to us. So, and I just want you guys to know that at Above All Ministries here, we don't have like um, super overhead. So the funds that we do get from each and everybody, a contribution, it is on good ground. We use that for our tours that we do, our campaigns. And, and that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty much it, except for coffee. I mean, back there, for those who drink your coffee. <laughs> but besides that, that's what, we, that's what we use that for. And I want to tell you guys, that if you were a part of the Love Thy Neighbor Tour in Generate, that's one of the benefits of your contribution. And it was a blast. The city, um, they welcome us. They welcome us. And we, it was nothing but love. And we are going until God tell us to stop. We're going to continue doing this Love Thy Neighbor Tour city to city, y'all. State to state to state. We're claiming it. You know, our next stop, of course, is going to be in Crowley. We kind of talking to some, the mayor and a couple other people trying to get some stuff together. And I'm going to release that date soon. But anyway, um, I'm going to get out your way without further ado. There's different ways that you can give. Number one, for those of you guys here, there's a box over uh, in there. You can just drop off um, your contribution or offering. Also, you can give via mobile, which is Cash, Cash App and PayPal, which is Above All LA, or online at Above All ministries la.com and just click on the tab give and you can also text to give you can text 866-860-4763 so at this time we want to go ahead and give it to the lord
Aber Zeichen halt. All right, guys, we appreciate, we appreciate every single thing, tithes and offer. Let's get started, man. I'm just ready to get to the word. I feel like I've been putting this too long. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for every single person that, that, that was able to give unto, this, unto today, God. And even those who weren't able, but they purpose in their heart that they want, I pray a blessing upon them. I pray a, a hundredfold blessing on every single person that did give and those that wanted to, God. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would be with them and be with us. And God, have your way in this place today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I got a couple of announcements real quick. Um, Y'all know one thing that we do here. We, we, we are about love, right? We, we, we trying to show love to, and, and this is why, because I want to explain that real quick before I get into this next thing. You know, if we, we are here to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, but before he went to the cross, y'all want to know one of, the, one of his dying wishes, one of his dying commands? Jesus said, a new command I give you, that we love one another. That's what he said. It was one of his dying wishes. So I believe that if, that if it's important to Jesus, it's important to us. And we run around town and we run around places, say, hey, we're disciples of Christ. We're Christians. We're believers. We all these different things. And, and, and how do we show that we're believers in all these different ways? We, we want to quote scripture to everybody. We want to speak in tongues before everybody. We want to invite them to church and do all these different things. But Jesus says, how would they know? How will the world know that you are my disciples? And he said, you would know that you would know that by the way that you love one another. So I'm telling you guys all this because I don't want y'all to think that we focus we're too much on love and not on God, but God is love, right? God is the source of love. He is the source of love. And you're going to see even in the resurrection that we're going to talk about, love is all over it. Love is all over it. So with that being said, we want to, I believe that if you have the love in you and you keep it in you and don't share it, then that's selfish. That's what I believe. You know, think about us that's married. You know, if we say we love, we love, we love, but then you don't do nothing to show that love. You think your spouse would be happy with that? So it's the same thing as the church. You know, it's the same thing. We can't say love, love, love. We love you, brother. We love you. But we don't show it. Jesus went out city to city showing love to everybody. That's what we're doing here. We're not going to say that we love God meaning that we love him and all his creation and stay inside the building and don't show love. We are to go out there and show love to the community. And, and showing love is showing them him. You understand what I'm saying? That's the purpose of going out and doing that. And therefore, I'm saying all of this just to say we got another event. <laughs> so as we work on the Love Thy Neighbor Tour, our next stop is Crowley. We're going to do something just for us to just chill, okay? And for all of you, all of you guys who are watching online, everybody's invited. We're going to be doing something on May 13th called A Taste of Love. OK, it's called A Taste of Love. It's going to be at the Bridge Ministries. If y'all were at the kickoff that we had, it's going to be at Bridge Ministries uh, right off of Universe. I think it's 410 Huval Bridge Ministries of Acadiana. It's a big building. You can't miss it. Big pavilion, everything. But they got a lot of land out there. So what we're going to be doing is this. It's just going to be a big picnic, a community picnic. That's all. We're going to have different organizations. We're going to have different churches. We're going to have different individuals. We're going to set up a tent table, whatever you got. It doesn't matter. We're going to set up and cook. That's only one thing that I ask. If you want to cook, let us know. You contact us. Give us a call or inboxes. You want to cook, you come on out and cook. That's one thing. Cook enough to share. That's all. That's all. Because it's exactly, it's just a big tailgate. So we're going to have a big tailgate, but we're inviting the community to come out to eat. So the purpose of this is just to, we're going to have music, we're going to have some games, and we're going to just line up everybody. We're just going to cook, and we're going to invite the, invite the community. We're going to supply bowls and spoons and forks for them, and all they got to do is just taste everybody's food for free. That's it. A taste of love. 
And that's what we're doing. Mark our calendars. That's May 13th uh, at Bridge Ministers, Ministries of Acadia. And that's a Saturday. Now, me and my wife are like, why are you doing it the day before Mother's Day? Well, I mean, it's not on Mother's Day. So I'm just <laughs> I'm telling my business, huh? <laughs> but that's, that's what we're doing. The second, the second announcement is this. I was praying last night, and um, I think we're going to start doing something a little bit different, okay? Because we got people like my Mona from Missouri, like Val from Colfax, my brother in South Africa. We got Deidre that's in South Carolina. All these people that's watching, we're going to start doing what I call church outside the box, okay? We talk about the box, right? But now let me explain what I mean by that. People look at us, we're doing things a little bit different. Oh, man, you can't touch people online. Yes, you can. God has, gave, God has given us these means to touch the masses. See, small minds, let me, I don't want to say that because I don't want to belittle nobody, but we tend to think small, if, that's, if that sounds better, when we think that only Lafayette needs Jesus. God has given this, these means to us. When, when he said that the works that you do, that I do, you shall do, but greater, remember what he meant. He didn't mean greater in kind, because ain't none of us going to raise the dead like he did, unless he, the power will fall upon you. But there's nothing new that we can do that he didn't do. But what he says greater, he means in magnitude. He gave us the tools. Jesus was one man walking the earth, healing, healing people you know, preaching the gospel. So what he means by greater is that now we have all these tools that Billy Graham was able to preach the gospel to millions. Why? Because he was able to jump on a plane that Jesus didn't have. Just like now we have the power of the internet. Now, why am I saying all this church outside the box? Because we could touch people even over the internet. So what we're going to start doing, we're going to start doing little gatherings, right? Over the internet. And I'm like, wait up, what you mean? Feel me on this. And when I say church outside the box, we mean you got to think outside the box. But the box also represents the church. That's my thoughts. OK, so it also means the box also represents the church. So we need to learn how to start having church outside the box. So, for example, the first thing is the gatherings, AAM gatherings. That's going to be for anybody. Let's say I'm on to decide to say, hey, I got about 10 people here. You know, somebody else in another area got 10 people. You gather your people and we're going to start having service. It might be on another day, you know, for, for all those where we could kind of connect. And it's going to be via Zoom where we can also communicate with one another. So it's, it basically it's going to be like a Bible study, right? Kind of like a Bible study. Also, that's one thing. That's the first thing. We also gonna we also gonna do do a men's group, yeah, crazy, huh? We gonna do a men's group online. We gonna do a men's group online. We gonna do the women group online. We gonna do the youth online. We gonna do what we call the wisdom leaders online. That's 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 for our older folks. We gonna do all these things online. Church outside the box. So one one month we may say, hey, you know what? The men meeting the, the men meeting tonight at seven o'clock. You ain't got to leave your house. Just make sure you wear a top. We don't want to see what's, what's at the bottom. Just, just put on the top. You know, but we're going to meet. We're going to meet online, and we be, able to, we be able to meet our brothers from Lafayette. We be able to meet our brothers from Baton Rouge, from Atlanta, Georgia, from South Africa, and everywhere else we need. And then now we can start, you know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpens another. We can't do that. We can't do that over the air. Can we? COVID came, COVID came for a reason and showed us something, man. Let's be real. Everybody, everybody working from home now. If you can work from home, you can, you can worship in, from home too. So that's church outside the box. We're going to be starting that immediately. <laughs> so for any of y'all, any of y'all who's interested of you guys as watching and you say, Hey, I want to start getting some people together. I want to start getting some people together. Y'all let us know. Um, I don't know what the email address is. Info at above all ministries, la.com, or y'all got the uh, Facebook and Instagram and all those different things. So uh, just hit us up. So without further ado, why are we here today? 
We're here to celebrate the resurrection. And I was debating, do we have a res resurrection message? And God put upon my heart to say yes, because we're, I was about to start a series called Another Comforter. But uh, we're going to start that next week. How I'm going to do that in Hawaii, I don't know. But, <laughs> but I will make it work. I will make it work. You know, got my Hawaiian natives in the house. <laughs> So if you could turn your Bibles to John chapter 20, we're going to read the whole thing, verses 1 through 18, and we're going to continue to move on. So the Bible says this. I'm reading out of the NLT. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and other disciples started out from the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings there, lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter arrived with his impulsive self and just went in. He just went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth they had covered Jesus, Jesus's head was folded, folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed for until then they still hadn't understood the scriptures that that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Verse 11. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. Key word, outside, outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her, because they have taken away my Lord, she replied. And I don't know where they have put him. She turned, she turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. Really, Mary? Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the father, but go find my brethren and tell them, I am ascending to, the, to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Father, we just ask that you bless this word, God, and use me and fill me up. Get me out the way, God, and you could take, take over completely. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, look, um, y'all know why we're here. We are here to celebrate the resurrection. And you ask yourself, how important is the resurrection? I'm going to tell you the points that we're going, to, we're going to talk about in a little bit. The, re the resurrection, first of all, is so important to us as Christians. Why? Because the resurrection is part of the basis of our religion, if you think about it. It is the basis of our faith. If there was no resurrection, then there's no salvation, Right? So if there, if, if there was no resurrection, then Jesus is just a lie. Anybody here bold enough to call Jesus a lie? No, not me. <laughs> you know, so this is, this is the basis of our, our faith. We believe, when we come to Christ, we believe what? We believe in Jesus. We believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So if you say, I believe all these things, but I don't believe in his resurrection, it is the power of the resurrection that saves. So how do we not believe in the resurrection? There's many people out there that, that say, well, Jesus wasn't dead. He, he just kind of passed out. That's false. Because if Jesus passed out, everything that we're going through is a lie. And I want to tell you that I'm not living a lie. I'm not living a lie because I, I, I love my God. Let me tell you the difference. And I, I'm not picking on nobody else's religion, but I want to tell you the difference between between the Christian religion and any other religion out there. This is the difference. Every religious leader, right? Whether it's Buddha, Muhammad, whoever it is, Confucius, Gandhi, you know, every religious leader died. Think about it. 
only one is still alive. This is what makes us different. Only one is still alive. You say, well, Jesus died. Yeah, but he rose up. Buddha can't say that. Muhammad can't say that. Confucius can't say that. Jesus rose from the dead and he is still living today. How do you know he's still living? He's living in me. Because the things that happened in my life, you cannot tell me that it wasn't Jesus. You can't. You cannot tell me because there are things, there are miracles and things that happen in my life that I can't even explain. I cannot explain it at all. And I refuse to believe that I'm the only one in here. And if I'm the only one that had this type of experience with Jesus, shame on y'all. <laughs> y'all not precedent enough. Now I'm just playing, but I pray that you do get that experience with him. I pray that you do get that. Because let me tell you, we serve a risen king. I am here to tell you today that he is risen. He is not still stuck in that tomb. He's not. He's not buried. I saw some, I was, as I was studying, I'm looking at all kind of different, um, uh, what you call that, uh, uh, not facts, but opinions, you know. One said, oh, when there had the great earthquake, there was a fault that opened and Jesus rolled out and he fell somewhere in the tomb. I, yeah, I seen all kind of stuff. But I want to tell you, and you're going to see in, in this message today, that Jesus is very well alive. He is alive and he still have that power. And I want to tell you guys to believe in the resurrection is to believe in the power of the resurrection. How many of y'all believe in the power of the resurrection? You know, that is very powerful for, for God to wake somebody up from the dead. He did it to Lazarus, right? He did it to Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forward. Three days, he was, everybody thought he was stinking. But what happened? Jesus, Lazarus, come forward. This God had the power to resurrect himself. How powerful is that? So when we believe in the resurrection, we also believe in the power of the resurrection. What do you mean by that, Doug? I want to explain this to you. When we believe in the power of the resurrection, that means we believe that God has the power to resurrect things in our own life. Because there's some things in our life that has been dead, and by now you think it's stinking. Let's be real. But Jesus has the power to resurrect those things. Well, what are we talking about? Think about it. There's things that you have given up on. Well, my bank account, I, I'm tired. I can't make any more money. He has the power to resurrect your bank account. <laughs> I'm praying for that resurrection. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be real. He has the power to resurrect your bank account. He has the power to resurrect your marriage. You think it all, man, everything is done. It's over. Blah, blah, blah. It, it's, been, it's been two years since I really talked to my wife. We just living in a house together. It, uh, my, my marriage stink it. And he said, come forth. He has the power to resurrect that marriage. That child that you, have, you haven't talked to, you, that child you haven't talked to in years and years and years. And guess what? All of a sudden, at the blue. It's no longer a dead situation. It's very much alive. If we believe in the resurrection, we believe in the power thereof. Straight up. There's so many things in us that we think it's just dead till it's stinking. Some of us are, are in the middle of a dead, stinky career. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> I can't say that out loud, you know. Teach it. I don't, I don't want to teach it. About it. But anyway, I said it, huh? I said it on camera. My bad. I, she's the best. I'm just playing. But no, real talk. Real talk. We in the career that we've been in for years, years and years and years, and we think that, you know, it's no hope. It's no use. God can resurrect that. I don't care how old you are. You, be, you think I'm too old for change. I'm, Abraham. And Sarah thought they were too old for child. If they're not too old for child, you're not too old for change. As long as the change is from the will of God. The problem is we put ourselves first too much and we think about ourselves first. And we always say, well, what we're going to do this and we're going to do that and well, I'm going to do this. And we never take the time to ask God, what is it that you want me to do? We are to be God led and not self led. So if we can remember those things, I promise you that he can resurrect even your even your stinky career 
just like that unforgiveness that we talked about, I would never forgive. Man, God can do a miracle. That's all, that's all, that's all I'm saying. But with that, with that being said, I want to talk about four points. We're probably not going to get to number four, but I'll close out with number four. We're going to, we're going to just break down um, this whole 18 verses. We're going to run through them, right? And there's four things we're going to talk about, and they're all great. It's all great things we're going to talk about. Number one, the great discovery. Number two, the great recognition. Three, the great news. And if we could make it, number four, the Great Commission. I told y'all, y'all great. Everything is great that we're talking about today because the resurrection is great. So early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene, let's stop. In order for me to get a full idea of what was going on, some people like to talk about and preach for, about the resurrection out of the book of Matthews. I chose John. However, it took me forever because to get a full account of what really happened, you got to read all four Gospels. You got to read all four Gospels because one say this, one tell it from this point, one tell it from this point, and you got to piece them all together. But one thing that all of them uh, mentioned that left me baffled, every single one of them said Mary Magdalene made it to the tomb. Now, the other Gospels, like Mark said that, one said that, well, it wasn't just Mary that, that woke up and went there. It was three women. Another one said two women. Then another gospel said it was several women. So we believe that it was actually several women there. But every gospel pointed out Mary Magdalene. It left me baffled with one question. Why Mary? Why Mary? Why was Mary so important in this, in this whole thing? All of the Gospels mention Mary. And we don't know a whole lot about Mary Magdalene. We don't. We went to, I went to Luke, I think it's Luke 8. Luke 8 and verse 1. Let's see, soon after Jesus became, soon, I love this. Soon after Jesus began a tour, I saw that and I said, Lord, they, real talk. Because think about it. Not Lord, they, Chantel. You knew I was going to get them. So he says, soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages. Y'all know what I thought about, right? Love thy neighbor tour. I'm like, Lord, thank you. We're doing the right thing. If Jesus did it, we follow in his footsteps. That's it. When I saw that, I was like, praise him. And look what he, he started. He started a tour to the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples. You don't need a lot. He took his 12, going to city to city. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirit and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene. Mary had some issues, y'all. Mary not only had issues, but Mary had some big issues. And, and this it says it right here who had been cured of evil spirits and disease. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out how many devils? Seven devils. Seven devils. She had issues. She had big issues. Huge issues. But guess what? She met a man named Jesus. And Jesus cured her of every single issue she had. When I'm talking about the power, this is the power that we're speaking of. Every issue that she had, all seven demons, gone, boom. When, when she met Jesus, Mary's life was, was never the same. But I want to tell you something that was even more important than her life not being the same. And I need you guys to listen to this and listen well. Not only her life was not the same, but her heart was never the same after that. Her heart was never the same. From the time she met Jesus and Jesus cured her and healed her from those seven demons, she fell in love with Jesus, not in a romantic way, because there's nothing in the Bible that shows me that, not in a romantic way, but in a grateful way, in a grateful way. Her heart was never the same. Every day she continued to press towards Jesus. Anything he needed, she kept, she was there. 
all throughout the Bible, whenever, whenever you talk about the disciples, they talk about the women. It was Mary Magdalene. She absolutely loved Mary Magdalene. So she pressed and loved him. So guess what? He loved her back. Because the Bible said we only love him because he loved us first. Right? It is us that shy away from his love. Mary just embraced the love that he was already given. And he enjoys when we embrace his love. And that's why he showed so much love to Mary. No disrespect to none of the other disciples. But Mary embraced that love and reciprocated that love. And, and, and that's why, that's why Ma I believe that Mary was always there, always there. The time that she met, this was, this was something very important right here. She never, she never forgot the day that Jesus delivered her. She never forgot it. It is that remembrance what created that love for her. Remembering what Jesus did for us creates that love in us for him. We should never forget that God delivered us from something. We should never forget that. Mary Hart was never the same. The problem is we are, we are like the 99 and not the one. You know, we, or, or, or the Bible mentions that, that he healed, well, no, it was 10 lepers, right? He healed 10 and nine went off, but only one came back and said, thank you, because he was grateful. He never forgot. It is our forgetful nature that caused us to lose love for God. We have a forgetful nature. We do. We do. And that's a problem. It's a problem. Look at the love that God showed for, for, for Mary. But we tend to have a forgetful nature that God delivered us from our trash, our junk, our situation. And we remember only for a season. And then we're back doing us. That was not Mary Magdalene. She never forgot. How many times say, oh, Lord, if you give me out this situation, Lord, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to be in church every week, God. And then he delivered you. And then two weeks later, you know, forgot about what God did for you. Right? Your life was changed, though. Think about it. Your life was changed because he pulled you out of where you were, but your heart stayed the same. Mary heart never was the same. And I want to tell you this. I'm always going to relate this to us in some kind of way. Not just, listen, not just when it comes to God that we, are, we have a forgetful nature, but it's with us, with one another. We have a forgetful nature. We have a forgetful nature. What do you mean? Well, simple. Especially in marriage. Can I pick on y'all for a second? Oh, you said something? No, I didn't. Mm, mm, okay. I'm not picking on you, but I thought you said something. Let's talk about our husbands and wives for a second. Just like we forget so quickly, what Jesus done for us and, and, and that love just kind of fade away. It's the same thing in marriage. We forget those things that our spouse has done for us. We gloat and we love those things when it's happening. But then afterwards, we forget that, it, that they did it. We forget and it creates that, less, that lesser love in us. And what happens is this is what's worse. What, what, what would have happened if Mary would have treated God as common or just normal, right? See, what happens, what we do in marriages, you know, and I, being that I'm a man and I'm the only one talking, then I could talk about the women, right? So, all right, ladies, I'm not going to pick on y'all. I was just playing. But think about it. What tends to happen is we give, we give, we give, and it's great. But throughout that giving, it becomes normal to you. And you be, it becomes normal and, and, and there's an expectancy, right? But with that expectancy and that normality become less gratefulness. It's quiet. Think about it. Because we give, we give, we give, we give, husband or wife. We continue to give. We continue to give. And then it gets to a point where you just forgot that they give. It's just normal. You just treat them as common. Because we have a forgetful nature, we should never forget 
Never, ever forget those who bless you, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's friends, whether it's family. You should always have an unforgetful heart. Always. Having a forgetful heart is what, what kills marriages. I'm telling you now. Listen to me, listen to me good. It is the unforgetful heart that destroy marriages. Okay, yeah, you know what? He came in, he came in and gave you flowers year after year after year. By year three, you're like, oh, okay, thank you. It's just flowers. It ain't just flowers. It ain't just flowers. It's the love behind giving the flowers. But it, be, it just became normal to you. You just got used of it. Man, a guy, she cooked, she cooked, she cooked, she cooked, she cooking. To you, I just got to eat. I just got to eat. No. It's the fact that let's not be forgetful and overlook that. That's when, that's when that love goes down because we take for granted those things. Because let me tell you something, the things that you take for granted, another person is going to be grateful. Can I say that up here? That was not Mary Magdalene. From the time she met Jesus, she never forgot what he did for her. From the time that you met, let's just pick out a name. From the time that you met Duck, you know. <laughs> I just pick out a name. First name come to mind. First name come to mind. You should never forget. First time you, you met, you seen Chantel. The things that she do, you should never forget. Never treat it as common. That's all I'm saying. Let's move on. Never forget. But the Bible, that go that hmm again. <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone, but I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> so the Bible said that Mary came early to the tomb. That is the love that she had. She didn't go the day before, right? Remember, he was to rise on the third day. Why she didn't go the day before? She couldn't wait. She served him in life, and she was going to ready to serve him in death. She couldn't wait, but she had to wait because of the Sabbath. But Mary went when it was dark. It was dark. The Lord said it was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. She couldn't wait. She woke up early to go. She said, man, this is my Lord. This is my God. I'm going to do whatever it is that, that I need to do to serve him. What about us? That love that we're talking about? Where's the love for God? Mary made that effort and said, and you wonder why, Mary? Because that was in my mind. Why, Mary? Mary is showing us why. She's showing the love that she had for Jesus, that if it took her to wake up early in the morning to go visit with him, that's what she had to do. What are we doing? Do we wake up early to go visit with him? We go visit with Facebook. We visit with Instagram. We visit with all these different things, but we do not wake up early to visit with God. How much do you love him? Mary loved him. Her heart was never the same. Where is your heart this morning? We're doing a heart check this morning. Where is your heart? Because because the lip service, we could talk all day. Let's be real. We could talk all day long. I love God. If you don't love God, what's wrong with you? We could do all these different things. But what are you doing about it? Mary showing us, man, 3 a.m. She was up sometime between three and six. And she was the first one to the tomb. She followed him through life and she, she served him and she served him through death. And you're going to see how important this love played a factor. Mary was there. Where is our dedication to Christ? We here on this earth, we have dedication. We dedicated to something. We are dedicated to something. Let's just be real. Every single person in this place is dedicated to something. Whether you're dedicated to your marriage, your husband, your wife, whether you're dedicated to your children, whether you're dedicated to your job, no matter what it is, you're dedicated to sports, you're dedicated to something. But I'm here to tell you, if you're dedicated to that more than you're dedicated to Jesus, it's an idol. It's an idol. And our God is a jealous God. And Mary did not, did not want Jesus getting jealous. She was more dedicated to him than to anything else. I'm not telling you to have no dedication, no. Because I'm a dedicated person. When I start something, I believe in finishing it. That's just me. I'm fully dedicated. But there has to be a happy meeting. There has to be a happy meeting. We say that 
We are to be dedicated to God first and foremost. Give him his time. He don't ask for a lot. That's, when, that's with our time. That's reading. That's with our prayer, even with our finances. I'm just being real. Where, is your where does your dedication lie? Mary was far from perfect, yeah, y'all. We just say she had issues. She had big issues. But Jesus loved her in spite of all her, all her issues. He does the same thing with us. He does the same thing with us. He loves us in spite of all the issues. Everybody here got issues. Some of y'all don't even have half the issues that I have. You know, but I'm still going to press through those issues and God is going to overlook those issues. And I'm praying that he helped me with, the, with, the, with those issues as well. Mary was not perfect, but she pursued the perfect one. So Mary gets to the tomb. And the stone was rolled away. Now, in John here, it just says that she get there and the stone was moved. This is why you got to look at all the Gospels, right? Because there was there was an episode that happened right before that. And then in Matthew 28, it states that the angels came. There was a big earthquake. There was a great earthquake. Right. And then the, the angel moved the tomb and he sat on and he sat on the tomb. Because remember, the the Roman soldiers sealed that tomb. They sealed it. So nobody can go in. They didn't want Jesus disciples going in and stealing them. But there is a great earthquake. The tomb rolled away and then comes Mary and Mary sees the tomb. She sees the tomb open. Before before every miracle in your life, don't be don't be don't be surprised. Don't be afraid that there's a shaking and a stirring in your life. Real talk. Real talk. It's not my notes. I'm just thinking right now. You know, don't be surprised that there is a shaking and a stirring in your life before the miracle comes. There was always the wilderness before the promised land. The problem is when the, when the stirring and the shaking and the earthquake happens, we take cover. We take cover. We run. When we're in the wilderness, we hide. The promised land is right in front of us. I'm telling you right now, embrace the earthquake. Embrace the quake, if that makes sense. Embrace the quake because know that the miracle is coming right behind it. It was the earthquake. It was the shaking. It was the stirring. It happened before Jesus, boom, bust out of the tomb, right? And that was the miracle. And I just believe that God is trying to do a miracle in all our lives. But sometimes we just can't see it. We're not designed to see it, y'all. We're not supposed to see it. We're not God. We're not God. That would make God, that would make him just too obvious, if that makes sense. You know, so we're not designed to see those things. But anyway, I don't know where that come from. So Mary, anyway, Mary comes and there's an empty tomb. So when she see that, she run. She run back and she tells Simon Peter. She meet Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Here's this word love again, right? Y'all know who that disciple was? Anybody, anybody? I can't hear you. John. It always mentioned the disciple that he loved. Why? Just like Mary Magdalene, John pressed in and showed his love at the crucifixion. Y'all want to know the only disciple that was there? John. John. You want to know what, which one of the women that was there? Mary Magdalene. It was love. They were there when Jesus, in Jesus' best time, and they were there in his worst time. How much do you love? Too many times we ride or die when it's good. But when it's time for us to bear our cross, you can't find nobody. Can't find nobody. That ain't love, bro. That ain't love. And, and we quick to point it out. We quick to point that out. Man, when I'm down, ain't nobody there. But where were you when they were down? Can I just say it? Where were you? We want to set the standard. We want to set the standard in here and show what true love, what true love really is. So anyway, so Mary goes and see, find Peter and John. So Peter stands up and he takes off. But guess what? The other disciple who loved Jesus takes off too. And the Bible says he passes up Peter and leaves him behind. Now, some theologians say, as I was reading, they say, well, John did that because, because he was younger. 
Some say he was younger than Peter, but I'm going to tell you why I think it was love that made him run that hard. Love will make you do some crazy things. Let's be real. We're talking about this love. Love is all over this, y'all. It's all over this. We cannot talk about the resurrection without talking about the love. The Bible says the other disciple, John, whom he loved, is love that made him run so hard. Because you can say, oh, he was younger. He passed up Peter. But you know what? They, it never said that he waited for Peter, though. They're going to the same place. He never waited for Peter. He forgot about Peter. <laughs> Pew! It was love because they say Jesus wasn't there. He had to go and see. It's love. It was love that made him, that, that made him run so fast. Love played an important role in, the, in this whole thing, y'all. And y'all going to see in a little bit. I'm going to tell y'all. But we're going to keep, we're going to keep moving. Uh, when they got there, so John gets there first, right? John gets there first, and, and, and he's there in awe, so he just can't go in because that's what love does. But Peter's impulsive. Peter just rushes in. Peter just rushes in. And so he sees the linen. Now, let's talk about these grave clothes. In the Bible, it says that, After Peter went in, he also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciples who had reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. So. All of the linen that was wrapped around Jesus was still in his perfect place, just like just like Jesus just kind of evaporated out of it. And because of the spices and everything that they put, the, it was almost like it was mummified. If you read and, and study, it was like it was mummified, right? So why is that important? They say the linen, the facial cloth, that was what was wrapped around his head. They said it was, it was put on the side. Everything was in order. Why is this important? This is important, again, for our religion, for the, Christ, for the Christian religion. Because so many people say, no, there is no way he was resurrected. He was stolen. It was too much order in that cave for him to be taken out by any robbers. How can you get that man out of the out of his wrappings without unwrapping him? There was no way to get him out of the wrappings. And then they said the cloth, the face cloth was nice and neat folded on the side. So Jesus took the time and just put the thing on the side and walk out. It's almost like he just. Just came through, just came through the rapids and the mummification just stayed there. This is another sign of him, of, of him truly resurrecting himself. But something happened. Let's go back to this disciple, the one whom he loved. Two went in, right? What's two went in? Peter and John. Y'all know what the Bible says, though? Y'all, I don't know if y'all caught this. Peter went in and they said, then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. So that mean they're both inside. But the very next phrase. They went in and he saw. And believed. Two went in. Only one believed. Only one believed. And you say, well, how you know Peter didn't believe? Because if you read all the other gospels, it'll tell you. It'll tell you. Because even when, when they left, because after this, they said then they went home. So even when they left, you're going to see where if you read the other Gospels, where the women went back and told them, we met Jesus, we met Jesus. And they still did not believe. Then the other then if you look at Luke, it talks about the two guys on the mayor's road that met up with Jesus. And then the, the guys on the mayor's road came back and told Peter and them, we met Jesus. And guess what? They still did not believe. But John. John just saw he saw and he believed. Why? Now y'all got me asking something else. Why, John? First it was, why Mary? Now, why, John? This is something that we talk about a lot, especially with my dude Cole over there. Why, John? Because love hopes. Love hopes. It's love. He had so much love for Jesus. First Corinthians 13, 7 said, love bear it all things. Believe it all things, hope it all things, and endure it all things. It's love. Love is all over this resurrection. Love hopes. Soon as he saw, he believed. 
because he hoped that Jesus would come one day come back to him. And that was his opportunity to say, you know what? I believe. I believe. And when he believed, then the Bible said the scriptures opened up to him. He understood the scriptures because he believed. Peter was yet to believe. So now you got Mary and you got John, the two that he loved. It's all about love, right? Love will make you look at this situations differently. Let's be real. Love will make you look at situations differently. Love will make you look at situations differently and other people look at you and don't understand you. I'm just being honest with you. Because somebody will tell you, oh man, look, they're being ugly to you and they're using you. Love will say, nah, they're just having a bad day and I'm just glad to be a servant. That's love. That's love. When you're not feeling that love, when you're not walking in love, it is easy for you to point out the negative. Love hopes, man. Love hopes for, for the good in people. When you see somebody, you know, we don't always, are oh, they doing this because of this? No. Love will tell you, man, what they're going through. What they're going through. Can I help them with something? Love don't say, oh, man, they, they try and go tell somebody else that ain't love. That's not love. Love hopes. They say love hope at all things. Love endure at all things. This was John, y'all. This was John. Love played an important role in this whole thing. It was love that kept Jesus on the cross. Let's be real. Could not our Messiah just call 10,000 angels by the snap of his fingers to destroy everybody? But it was love that kept him on the cross. Love for, uh, for who? For us. It was love. It was all love that kept him on the cross. It was love why the, why the resurrection happened. It was his love for us where he went to that, he went to that grave and he rose. And it was love that helped John to believe. And as we're about to see the great recognition, it is love why Mary Magdalene was the first to see Jesus. Why Mary? Why John? Love. Love. Love is just the darnest thing, ain't it? And when I went in this to, to start studying it, I didn't go in there with the intentions on studying it like this, but love just popped out the page. Love just popped out the page. Because when I kept asking, why Mary? Why Mary? Then I get to John. Why John? Why John? Man, Jesus loved them. He loved them. I'm not saying that he didn't love the disciples. You know, that's kind of like me. I always say that I'm his favorite, you know, but, you know, but I mean, hey, y'all like too, you know, but I'm just playing. But, but John was the first to believe and Mary was the first to see because of love. And if you keep reading verse 11, verse 10 says, then they went home. They went home, one believing, one non-believing, right? In verse 11, Mary stand, was standing outside the tomb. Remember that outside. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and she wept. She stooped and looked in. She kept looking in the tomb. She's outside the tomb. She kept looking in the tomb. Then she see two angels, and the angel said, why are you crying, Mary? Why are you crying? Then she turns and sees what she thought was a gardener, right? And I'm going to read it. She turned to leave and, and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. And then Jesus asked, dear woman, why are you crying? Now, she's having a conversation with Jesus, and she does not recognize him. And who are you looking for? It left me thinking why she didn't recognize him. And, and, and some of this is speculation. This is my thoughts, and I'm going to tell you why I think. One is the obvious, right? Feel me on this. I believe one of the reasons why she may not have recognized Jesus because her eyes was flooded with tears. Let's just be real. They say she was crying. So her eyes flooded with tears. She wiping her tears off, you know, so she, she just, maybe she just didn't see him. The second reason why I believe why she was crying, because Mary insisted on facing the wrong direction. I said, well, what are you talking about? She was outside the tomb, right? She was outside the tomb, but she kept looking in. Jesus right there in front of her. 
She kept looking back at the tomb. Jesus right there in front, but she kept looking back. Right? She was looking at a dead situation when she had the living answer right in front of her. But she kept looking back. Are we guilty or what? Because you know what? We fail to see Jesus right there in front of us because we keep looking back at our dead situation. We're looking at our circumstance. We're looking at our sorrow. And Jesus is right there. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? And you keep looking back with tears in your eyes. There's a quote that William Barclay says. William Barclay say this, when sorrow comes, we must never let the tears blind our eyes to glory. And we must never fasten our eyes upon the grave and forget the heavens. We should never do that. And I want to, I want to talk to y'all about something that's really touchy, right? I was thinking about should I mention it, should I not? It's also with our loved ones that we lost. We have to be careful, especially the loved ones that we lost that we know that we're saved. We focus on the grave and not focus on the heavens where he, re where he or she really is. We keep focusing on the grave instead of saying we know that you went, you in paradise and I'll see you soon. But we focus on the mission and not to see you soon. I know it's a touchy situation. Don't let your tears and your sorrow distract you or blind you from seeing the heavens. Get your eyes off the grave. We know that you miss them. And it is fair. It is fair. We miss our loved ones, but we know that they are in a better place. And eventually we will be there together. We have to remember that. It's a touchy situation, but we can learn something from Mary. Let's not miss out on Jesus and the heavens for looking at the grave and looking at our sorrow. So she has a conversation with, and we're going to wrap up in a few. I don't think we're going to get to the Great Commission. So Mary, Mary is having a conversation. Jesus talks to, him, talks to her, and she still doesn't recognize it until he does one thing. Y'all know what he did? He said, Mary. And then instantly, look what the Bible says. Mary, Jesus said, immediately she turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is the same thing as rabbi, which means master or teacher. This was different. It was more than a conversation. This is what I call the call, right? This was the call when he said, Mary, how many know that Jesus know your name? You know, each and every one of y'all by name. This was not, it, it wasn't the voice, it was a different voice though. It, it wasn't the voice of the creator calling the creature. It was not that. It, it wasn't even the voice of the master calling the servant. It was the voice of the shepherd calling out for the struggling sheep. Feel me on this. Because there are many times we are his sheep. When we come to Christ, we are his sheep. And the Bible says that my sheep know my voice. Then they know when I, when, when I call them by name, they come. They come. We are his sheep. And this was that call from the shepherd. He knows our name. Let me tell you something. You can put, a, you can put three different owner sheep all in one field, and they all look alike. But when that shepherd calls, his sheep going to follow. He's going to walk away, and his sheep going to follow. The other's not going to go. And I thought about that and I said, this is a perfect example when, when Jesus says, you know, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. We may look like them other folks. We may look like the world, but we're not the world. We're not the world. When he call your name, do you hear him? Do you come? Do you come? Are you sheep or are you cattle? Are you sheep or are you cattle? You're like, well, what's the difference? Cattle can be steered. They can be driven, drive wherever. Sheep follow. Sheep are led. Cattle are steered. People are steering you in every direction, every, wherever they want to bring you. 
They're steering you here. They're steering you there. They're steering you to the club. They're steering you in all different directions. Sheep are led. We are, we as sheep are born, born to follow our shepherd. We hear his voice. We hear his voice. I want to read a couple of scriptures because three things about this call. His call is a seal of redemption. John 10. John chapter 10, verse doo, 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 verse three. I had another, but I'm going to just read that one. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name. Aren't you his sheep? This, this, I think of, of Tasha Cobb's song, he knows, he knows my name. He knows your name and leads them out, not stare them. He leads them out. His sheep is instantly recognized. His call is instantly recognized by his sheep. You know. This here, man, it, it's... um. I, I just think sometime, man, in this world of what we call Christianity, right? This is how you know when we're playing church. I, I don't. I, I, I've, I was trying to stay away from the church thing today because <laughs> I don't want to seem like I'm always on the church, but I just hope, love hopes, love hopes for us to be better as a whole, as a universal church. Because there's several times that Jesus called, but we don't answer. And just like Mary, we ought to do like Mary and answer immediately. Master, rabbi, teacher. But we're too busy listening to everything and everyone else till we can't hear our shepherd. You are being steered. You're being steered by pastor. You're being steered, you're being steered by uh, your neighbors, you've been steered at work, you've been steered by all these different people and you're not being led. Be sheep this morning and not cattle. Be sheep. Verse four says this, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but we know his voice. And the last thing, like I said, we should instantly answer. We should instantly answer. And if we have problems hearing his voice, when he calls us by name, then we got our pipes clogged somewhere and we need to call a plumber listen because we got we got an open pipeline between us and god it is us that's clogging our pipes we're clogging with all kind of different things and we're not hearing properly so sometimes we got to get those things out how many of y'all need draino this morning <laughs> let's be real we need some draino clear them pipes man clear them pipes i'm not telling you that Every single day, you got to be in your word, you know, all day, all day, 24 hours. No, but, you know, those that are sheep delight in his word, though. Let me just say that. We delight in his, in his word. And if you delight in yourself more into TV than his word, then you're clogging up them pipes. And we ain't going to talk about what you're watching on TV. You know, balance that thing out, you know. Let's move on. Let's get back to, because we're going to wrap up after this last one. We're going to get back to John 20. Last thing, yo. What we said, the great, what was the first great? You remember? The great discovery. The second great was what? The great recognition. So now Mary, Mary recognizes Jesus. And then now the great news, because Jesus tell her to do something. And if you go to verse 18, seventeen, Jesus says, Don't cling to me, which I kind of fought with that one, but it was so many different things that I saw when it came to that. And and, and the King James says, Touch me not. Um, 
and, and it wasn't that Jesus didn't want her to want want him to touch her. It was just that she wouldn't let go. She wouldn't let go. And that was because of love. So he said, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the father. But go and find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and your God. In verse 18, the great news, which some of us call the good news, but today is great. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. What is the great news? Simple. I have seen the Lord. It's the gospel. That's it. The good news. Today we're just going to call it great because everything else was great. And I believe the gospel is great. <laughs> and, and let's talk about this for a second. He says the great news, the good news. All Mary said was what? I have seen the Lord. That's it. I have seen the Lord. It's her experience with God that she went back to tell everybody about. I have seen the Lord. She did not say, hold on, let me quote some scripture to you. Let me speak in tongue. Let me prophesy in your life. She said, I have seen the Lord. That's it. I, I just want to tell y'all, man, I said I wasn't going to get there, but I can't help it. But I can't help it because we overcomplicate the gospel too much. We overcomplicate things. Let me let me just lay it on the line. Let me just get it out of me. OK, I got to get it out of me. We overcomplicate. We overcomplicate the gospel. We overcomplicate Christ. I have seen the Lord, Mary said. That's it. It is your own testimony. It is all about your experience. And then you know what he said, what, 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 what Mary said after that? It says that Mary said, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Y'all caught that? His message. The problem is we want to we want to we want to witness to people and we want to put everything in the gospel but his message. We want to put everything in. A, I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care nothing but Christ and him crucified. That is his message. We are celebrating his message today. Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I have seen the Lord. Well, duh, why are you the way you are? Why are you changed? Why you don't drink no more? Why you don't hang out and party in the clothes? Because I have seen the Lord, baby. I have seen the Lord. Y'all don't understand. I have seen the Lord because I am like Mary Magdalene. My life has changed, but my heart changed also. My heart changed, y'all. Why? Because I have seen the Lord. I'm not, I don't need to come to y'all and tell y'all about anything else. I don't need to put stuff on top of that. It is, it is, I have seen the Lord. I know him. And I'm going to tell you about his message. What is his message? He loves you. That's his message. He loves you. He loves you and he died for you. He died for every single sin that you cause. I don't care how small, how big. He died for you. He died for you. But he gave you a place to place those sins because he can, he can forgive you. I don't care. I don't care how big. I don't care. 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 He'll forgive you. And if that's not enough, you tell me what. This whole Bible people were saved. Jesus preached to the multitudes. John the Baptist preached to the multitude and just said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. He didn't add to that. He didn't say this. He didn't say that. He didn't say where I'm from. He didn't say none of these things. He just said his message. His message. Not Duck's message. Not Chantel's message. Not Mona's message. Not Derek's message. His message. God's message. And that's the gospel. I'm sorry. I had to get it out. I had to get it out. No, not yet. No, not yet. Because look, we overcomplicate things. And it's the overcomplication that confuse the, the goats. You want to talk about sheep and goat? The goats desire to be sheep. But we overcomplicate things and we remain, we let them remain as goats. Let's be real for a second. The Great Commission that we're going to talk about where Jesus said, go out and teach the nations. But how can we teach them something that we don't have or something that we don't know? We cannot do that because if we focus on something else, we focus on this and we focus on this and we're not focusing on is what? I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord and then give your message. Jesus died for you. Is that not enough? Is that not enough? Let me ask y'all this question. Real talk. If y'all got somebody y'all know right now, right now, that know that you were wrong, 
you were wrong, right? And so they said, you know what? You was about to get the death penalty. You did the crime. Each and every one of y'all, y'all did the crime. But somebody said, no, 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 no. Don't worry about it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Let them go. Let them go. I'll take that penalty. And they die for you. Brother, sister, friend, no matter who it is, would you not talk about it? Would you not talk about it? Or would you be too busy talking about the clothes that he wore when he died? You want to talk about his hair when he died. You want to talk about all these different things except the fact that he died. Refocus this morning. Refocus. I have seen the Lord. That is the message. I have seen the Lord. Then we preach his message. His message. Not our message. Get you out of the way. Get you out of the way. Because when we start to add these things, you realize, you, you know, maybe you don't realize. It, became, it becomes more of a self-pride type of thing. You're putting more and more in it, and you can't save nobody. The power of the resurrection is not in you, it's in him. The power of the resurrection is in God, not in duck. I have seen the Lord. My people ask me all the time, man, you coming, you doing this? Now, this is the thing. I still go because I love my people. I love my people. You got to cut it down the middle. You can't tell people I have seen the Lord to a bunch of people who saw the Lord too. <laughs> Let's just be real. Let's be real. I have seen the Lord. Me too. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. What he did for you? Oh, yeah, high five. You can't do that. Jesus went city to city. Telling his story. That is what we are to do. I just want to cut it straight in the middle. So when we, when you hear people in church say, oh, oh, mm -mm, stay away from your family, your lost family. Well, then how can you be an example? The Bible calls us to be salt and light. But if it's bright as day, I saw what the world, I almost said a, 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 a wrong word. My bad. I, I, I got to get it out of me, babe. But I'm just saying, what in the world do you need a flashlight for at noon? Feel me on that. If you are light, what do you need a flashlight at noon for? Look outside. We need a flashlight outside? Light don't, light, light don't have an impact amongst light. You know what? Can we sharpen each other? Absolutely. Absolutely. We can. And that's one, of, that's one of the reasons why we're going to start doing church outside the box. We want to sharpen each other, but we want to cut it down the middle. I'm not here to tell you, stay away from your family. No, man, that's not biblical. Let me be real, that's not biblical. All they drinking and all that, so? Me and this dude, that's my uncle right there. Guess what we going a little bit? We're going to cry. They're probably going to be drinking, gambling, all that. I'm going to be right there with them. I ain't going to lie. I'm not going to be partaking in it, though. And if it gets too much for me, then I'll leave. Simple. Simple. How will they know light if they never see light? That's it. Go to the nations. Your family is the nations. Your family is the nations. Stop staying away from your family. Your family actually needs you. Your family needs you, man. Stop, stop staying away from them. Because we are a Christian. Because let me tell you something, what your, how your family look at you, okay? None of this in my nose, but we're going to go. I just got to get it out of me. It is a therapy session for me. Let me tell you how your family look at you. When we do these things, when we stay away from our family and don't go amongst them, your family, your family feels like you turn your back on them. And they believe that you are now part of a cult. If I'm lying, somebody correct me. That's what they think. Oh, they part of this Jesus thing. How many times you heard they part of this Jesus thing or, oh, they religious? That's the two things I got. 
Because when I came, you know, when I came to Christ, I thought that, you know, I was supposed to do that. That's what I thought. You know, but how I'm supposed to tell the good news if everybody over here already know the good news. So all I'm saying, guys, be salt, be light amongst the nations. That's the Great Commission. I'm going to close out with the Great Commission because he says, I'm going to read it to you real quick in Matthew 28, because this is still the Great Commission is part of the resurrection, in case y'all didn't know, because if you read all of all of the. Uh, Matthew, if you read all of the Gospels. This was before Jesus ascended. And he told them. In, in 28, 18, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go. That's it. That's it. You guys said nothing else. Therefore, go. We're not going. At above all ministries, we're going. We're going. We are going. We're going. And, and, and I made a comment at the Love Thy Neighbor Tour in Generet. It doesn't take a mega church to get out there and go. Because I believe that of the, the mega churches have some of the smallest ministries. And I don't mean in number. I mean as far as ministry, the definition of ministry is to go out and minister, to go out to the nations. And you can have thousands and thousands of people. But if you're not going out what Jesus told you to do, you are small. You're small. You have a small ministry. This is why we're not above all church. We're above all ministry because we are called to go. And that's what we're going to do. So I hope y'all got your walking shoes on because we're going and we're going to show people love. But guess what? We don't want to go try and clean somebody else's house before we clean our own. Love on your family, man. Love on your family. He said, I have given all given. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go. And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these disciples to what? Obey all commands. Check this out, though. Let me show you the twist. He said, teach them to obey all the commands. But guess what? We had the discussion before. The disciples asked Jesus, and we're going to close out. He asked Jesus, what is the greatest commands? And we just talked about it last week. All the commands can be summed up in how many words? One word, which is what? Love. That's our command. Obey the command to love. That's it. He said, obey all the commands he, have, he has given you, I have given you. And be sure of this. If you obey those commands, I be sure I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let's pray, y'all. Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much, God. God, we just reverence you. We thank you, Father, for... Uh, having us on this resurrection sunday we thank you for what you've done for us that you have died god but most importantly that you rose from the grave with all power and all might god we thank you for just being there for us and god resurrecting us out of our situations that we had god and we just ask right now in the name of jesus christ god that you would come into our hearts and that you would change us, just like Mary Magdalene, God. You would change our life, but you would also change our hearts that neither one of them would be the same, God. We also pray that that love that John had, Father, that we would believe, that we would, that our love would hope in everything, God. We would stop being negative, Nancy, this morning, God. That we would pray and hope and endure it for all things, God. But first and foremost, God, we pray that our love for you will grow stronger, God, that we believe in you, that we believe in your death. We believe in the resurrection that we are celebrating today. And we believe that you have risen from the grave with all power, like you said, God. And Father, I thank you, God. And as always, if there's anybody in here that don't know who you are and what's the big fuss about the resurrection. Father, I pray that you would prick their hearts on today, God, and that you would save them, God. The heavens rejoice for one, and so shall we. So, Father, we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two things before we go. Two things. I remember this time. Two things. If, if we are in that state where we say we don't know what all of us is all about, you know, why, what is, why everybody cutting up about Jesus? Why are we cutting up about this resurrection? You know, and you say, well, what is it to be saved? 
we talked about the gospel all through this message. The gospel is love, that he went to that cross, the whole resurrection, it was for you. We know that he died for every one of your sins. And you, you may be sitting here thinking, well, what must I do to be saved? It is easy. It is easy. Number one, just admit that we're sinners. We have to admit that, you know, not to pick on nobody because we all are. Some of us just redeem sinners. That's all. That's all. But I'm a sinner too, you know. Secondly, we are like John himself, the disciple whom God loves. We believe. We believe in Jesus, his death, burial, and his resurrection. And then we confess that he is our Lord. We confess with our mouth that he is our Lord. And, and the reason why I like to say it out loud, because I believe that, you know, we can stand firm for other things. We should stand firm and confess our faith to show the devil that we're not playing and, and he can no longer have us. And that's why I like to confess it out loud. You know, there are times when we say, hey, just keep it to yourself and be silent. But it's a declaration of fate and saying, devil, you, you can't have us no more. I belong to another, another one. And we ask that he fill you up with another comforter, which is going to be our series. So if y'all can repeat after me, say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for going on a cross, for dying. And also raising from the grave. Your words say, if I ask anything in your name, you shall do it. Father, we're asking that you would save us, a sinner. I believe in Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and resurrection. I ask right now that you change my situation and you change my heart where I never be the same and deposit an extra dose of love in me, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, I think we got communion and we're going to go ahead and go. We, for those who want to partake in communion, um, I know we just, we're talking about the resurrection, but before the resurrection, we always want to remember, ma'am, we want to always remember, which we talked about the whole time, but remember what Jesus did for us. So it was that night before this resurrection Sunday when he was at the table for the last supper with his disciples and Jesus took the bread. We don't wait a moment, my bad. But that night, Jesus took the bread when he was amongst his disciples and he broke it. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body that has been broken for you. And he says, eat thereof, all of it, in remembrance of me. Let us eat. That same night, in like manner, he took the cup and he says, this is, God bless you. God bless the truth. He said, this is the cup. This is the blood that was shed for you. The blood of the New Testament, the new covenant. And he gave to his disciples. And he said, drink and do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink. Father, we thank you for your body and your blood that was shed on Calvary's Hill for each and every one of us. And we ask that you remember that we will always remember that. And Father, we thank you for all that you've done. And let us not just use you as a blessing bag, but Father, just be there for us always. In Jesus' name, amen. So don't forget, y'all, before we go, May 13th, taste the love. Remember that. Also, I need y'all help with something else. When we do things like this, I like to just hit a button so I can let everybody know, because if we have to say we're going somewhere else, I could just hit that Remind app and just send out the messages to everybody. So make sure that you, if, if you're not on that Remind app, 
if you would text the keyword at the at symbol pray monday to the number 81010 at pray monday to 81010 you're going to automatically be enrolled in that app and i will be able to give you guys notifications for everything that we do so what else huh we need oh yeah i mean if you don't mind before we go y'all i want to do something uh my brother and cousin is having surgery when you're having surgery silky if you don't mind friday if y'all could just stand in agreement with me let's pray for silky come on up here silky. bring your family bring your family let's stand in agreement and then we're going to depart, y'all. Except for Chloe. Chloe, you could have stayed. <laughs> I'm just praying. I'm just playing. Come here, baby. I'm going to get a hug. Oh! I'm remember that. I remember that. But Silton is having surgery. Love you. Silton is having surgery. We just want to just kind of, if you could stretch forth your hands and just kind of pray for him. And we're going to pray for a speedy recovery. And make sure that that, that, that that surgery goes well, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, God, depending on your resurrection power, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, lifting your son up to you, Silton Jenkins, God. We call him by name, just as you call him by name, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that the surgery that he's about to have will be done swiftly, God. And the recovery process, Father, will be quick, quick and easy, Father God. We pray that you even stay to the doctor's hand, God. Let the doctor be praying right now, God. Because we know that you're the doctor who made the doctor. So, Father, we ask that you would touch them right now, God. And we pray that everything goes smooth in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We pray for any worry, anxiety in him or his family be gone in the name of Jesus, Father. We ask that you would be right there on the side of that table the entire time, Father. And Father, whatever it is that's not right, we ask that it be straight, God, when it's all said and done. So, Father, we just pray that you would just anoint my brother and just bless him and heal him swiftly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you, young man. You too. So y'all be blessed. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We bless everybody that's in this place. As we depart from one another, we just ask that you will continue to cover them. You are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And we all here seeking you, God. Let us all go out and tell the simple good news, great news that I have seen the Lord. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. Uh -huh.